There are trees everywhere in urban and suburban settings. Whether you live on Oak Street, Elm Road, or Whispering Pines Estate, you will likely see trees. They serve ornamental purposes, shading the driveway, or framing a residence or business. They're also used to enhance a city's green space, adding shade and beauty to community parks or other urban forest areas. Where you have trees, the maintenance and removal is ongoing. Ash trees are dropping in Oak Creek this week like bugs when they've been hit by a fly swat. Actually, the city forest department is trying to stop the spread of the emerald ash borer, a wood boring beetle from Eastern Asia that has already killed millions of trees in the Midwestern United States and is threatening millions more. It's a common scenario facing many municipalities, needing to remove a large number of trees on an ever tightening budget. Today, thanks to advancements in modern logging technology, equipment such as the harvester and forwarder, typically used in forest situations, can provide an efficient and economical way to handle the removal of larger volumes of urban trees. A recent demonstration done by federal and state agencies a municipal forestry department and private industry companies set out to test the overall efficiency and cost effectiveness of using modern logging equipment in an urban and suburban environment. Emerald ash borer is unfortunately 100% fatal to ash trees that are not protected. It's going to get to your ash trees in the cities if it's not already there and one of the side effects of the Dutch elm disease die back in the 60s and 70s was that there was a lot of ash planted in our communities. So emerald ash borer is going to have a dramatic impact on our communities over the coming years. In our particular instance with uh, having found emerald ash borer in Oak Creek one year ago, we are looking at more removals than most cities at this time. We're pretty excited to get on board with several hundred free removals and a huge dent into our five-year management plan on emerald ash borer. Traditional urban forestry or arborist hand chainsaw crews are the norm for things like storm cleanup and the removal of dead or diseased trees in our communities. But even with today's skilled workforce, there's only so much a chainsaw crew can accomplish in a day. Contrast that with the cut-to-length harvester and forwarder commonly used in forest situations. The speed and volume at which today's harvesters can fell and process trees is astounding. The urban landscape is certainly different from forest lands, but the speed and effectiveness of a harvester and forwarder in an urban environment will typically be much faster than the traditional chainsaw crews. We could probably remove 10 to 15 17 inch diameter trees on a good day. Um, the processor, especially if they were uh, running smoothly because they knew the city and knew the course of things, could probably remove 100 trees a day for us, if, if not even more. There are several different types of harvesters made to serve a variety of functions. Attached to the end of the boom is the harvester head. It comes in fixed head or dangle head. Dangle head harvesters are preferred by some because they allow for more maneuverability and do not result in as much site disturbance. Fixed head harvesters are larger and can sever a tree and move it to a more convenient place to process it. Harvester head booms can be mounted on tracked or wheeled carriages. Wheeled harvesters are preferred in urban situations because they result in less ground disturbance, although under wet conditions any type of equipment could cause damage and should be used with discretion. Wheeled equipment can also travel to the next site on roads or streets, whereas tracked machines would have to be transported by trailers. A forwarder works in conjunction with the harvester. It loads cut products into what is called a bunk. There are single and double sized bunks available. When full, the forwarder transports the wood products to the designated landing areas. The main urban locations where tree removal by a harvester would be appropriate are along city streets, suburban roadways, park settings, or other wooded areas. Harvesters should never be used where there are power lines running through tree canopies. 
Also be aware of obstacles that may be too close to the operating area, making it difficult for the harvester to maneuver. Things like pools, fences, shrubs, mailboxes, even pets on chains may become an issue. Steps necessary to the process include closing or clearly marking roads with harvesting crews and talking with homeowners about what will be happening. Good morning. We're here with the ash cutting crew. Okay. Uh, we'd like to start soon and we'd like to talk with you before we sure. start cutting. Okay. The harvester's cutting carriage is an ingenious apparatus. It's equipped with arms that grab the trunk or limbs. A saw blade scissors out and cuts through the wood. Then, rotating components are used to move the cut piece in one direction or another. It helps with maneuverability, but also serves to strip away smaller branches. If the tree is on the smaller side and there is enough adjacent space, the harvester will grab the tree just above ground level with the cutting carriage and cut through the tree while the carriage and boom direct the tree to the ground. If the base of the tree is too big, or if the crown is spread out and cannot be safely felled as a single piece, the operator will cut it into several pieces from the top down. In some cases, only the tree tops can be cut by the harvester because it's over the diameter limit that a harvester can cut. In this case, safety dictates that it makes better sense to have a hand cutter fell the trunk of the tree. Once the tree is cut down, the branches are mechanically removed and the tree bowl is cut into appropriate product lengths by the harvester. Working in tandem with the harvester, the forwarder provides a quick and efficient way to transport the wood to a landing area where it can be more easily accessed by a log truck or a chipper for further processing. How the tree is processed is determined by the markets that have been identified. The cut sections are generally categorized into one of four products, the most common of which is firewood, generally when there is not much volume or if the trees are not sizable. The other products include saw logs, usually larger in diameter and of better quality for sawing lumber, pulp wood, usually four to 10 inches in diameter and used for paper production, chipper fodder, Usually, tops, branches, and other materials that do not qualify for the other two products will be chipped or ground for biomass fuel or mulch. We've been working to sort out the pulpwood and be able to load that under railroad cars, the tops to go to mulch, and we have several sawmills willing to come in and look and hope we end up with a couple of, of uh, trucks of uh, saw logs. Experts say potential income from product harvested in urban environments is generally minimal. But the objective of using modern logging equipment is to reduce municipalities' handling costs. Hence, by utilizing saw logs and pulpwood and possibly chips, there are less handling and disposal issues for municipal tree service personnel. The five-day urban logging demonstration in the city of Oak Creek enabled DNR and city officials to determine the time parameters, volume capabilities, and costs of urban logging. On Monday, the crew removed trees from the City Highway Department and Recycling Center grounds, as well as from an urban street and a local park, for a total of 94 trees. And that was working in conjunction with the video crew for most of the day. On Tuesday, the crew worked along a rural road in a residential area, removing 46 trees. Wednesday's harvesting took place in an industrial park working in wooded areas, along boundary fencing and between buildings and streets. In all, 121 trees were removed, even with a team involved in a workshop for half of the day. Thursday, the crew continued working in the industrial park. A remarkable 216 trees were removed. On the last day, crews wrapped up in the industrial park, removing another 39 trees. In all, in just one week, the crew was able to harvest 516 trees. Of that number, only 75 trees were less than 6 inches in diameter. A time analysis of 73 street and yard trees with an average stump diameter of 14.8 inches showed that the average cutting time was just under 3 minutes a tree. Total time spent felling, processing and positioning the 73 trees was a little more than 4 hours, with a range of between 30 seconds to 11 and a half minutes per tree. Breaking it down by machine, on the street and yard trees, the harvester spent one hour on actual tree work to every three hours of logistical time, such as moving between sites, 
planning, felling and processing, breakdowns and maintenance, and traffic and safety issues. That means in a 40-hour week, the harvester would be felling and processing for 10 hours. The forwarding time is harder to estimate, as it's dependent on the distance to the drop material point. However, typically the forwarder was able to handle five to six trees per load. Total cost for the project was $25,000. That included all costs of using the logging equipment, including transport to and from Oak Creek. In addition, the personnel time and equipment from the city of Oak Creek directly spent or used on the removal operation was also part of this total. That breaks down to $48.45 a tree, when including trees at all diameters, including 75 under 6 inches. Without factoring in the smaller trees, costs would be approximately $56.69 a tree. In today's economy, it's essential to recognize there are options when dealing with urban tree removal. The harvester and forwarder combination is a viable option for urban tree removal that deserves consideration. It offers the opportunity for the city that's organized, or multiple cities, if they put together a whole lot of trees they want to take down quick, then this offers the opportunity then to contract with a logger to come in on a daily rate and do this for them. The, when the idea was also that the loggers have two different times of the year, spring break up and kind of a break up that occurs about now, where they can't be working in the woods. So that equipment is city idle. And so it's an opportunity for the logger to use their equipment and make some revenue and an opportunity for the city to reduce their costs of removing the trees they want to. But while the Department of Natural Resources is encouraging municipalities to keep all options open, cutting them down is a surefire preventive strike. If your community is facing the need to remove greater volumes of trees, no matter what the reason, mechanized removal might be the right way to go. For questions about using this option in your community, contact Don Peterson with the Sustainable Resources Institute or Terry Mace, Forest Utilization and Marketing Specialist with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Funding for the Mechanized Utilization Processing of Urban Trees Project conducted in the City of Oak Creek was provided in part by a Wood Education and Resource Center Northeastern Area State and Private Forestry U.S. Forest Service Grant and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Special thanks to the City of Oak Creek Forestry Division.